And so the last two lines of verse 3 are quite apt as we speak about where love and peace and a joy abound. There is truth and light. And that's Reverend John. So it gives me great pleasure to invite Reverend John to share this morning's message with you. Reverend John. Good morning, friends. It's a joy to add my own words of welcome uh, and to those people that listen to us on the World Wide Web. And I wanted just to say that God really has a sense of humor. This morning, as I was abiding in the shower with truth and light and my soul full of all kinds of good things, my phone rang. And it was a friend, a good friend, who said, Reverend John, I was all soaked up, you know. And he, this person said, Reverend John, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to church this morning. I don't have any water. <laughs> I didn't tell him that I was all soaked up. So as he had put on his shaving cream or something and then turned on the pipe and there was no water. And I also didn't tell him that my encouragement today is titled, The Well of Self. <laughs> and he might therefore go to the well of self for water. Uh, Tony Henry, my housemate, said, we tend to go into the fridge. That's what you call a cold shower and catharsis. But you know, friends, I have been thinking a lot about all of this unrest between, between religions and people of different faiths. And a friend of mine recently asked me about that and said, you know, what is your take on it? And I was reminded of a, a talk I'd heard by spiritual theologian, Dr. Matthew Fox, a few years ago when I attended one of our religious science annual conferences. I think it was a minister's conference I was at. And he was saying that, many, that the, the many world religions, the many denominations, are like wells dug all over the globe by people thirsty for the meaning of life. Isn't that so true, that people want to know what is this thing called life that we are in and what is our role in it? Fox made the point that there are innumerable wells, but they are all fed from one stream. There is only one stream. What is that stream, that one source? God. And he maintained that healthy spirituality is about the purification of our longing. Isn't that a lovely thought? Healthy spirituality is about the purification of our longing for, for a, a closer walk, a deeper relationship with the divine that is within all people, regardless of what they call it, how they worship it, what they think of it. There is really only one God, the source that feeds all the wells of humans longing for that close connection with the divine. There's a story in St. John's Gospel about an interaction between the beautiful Jesus and a woman of Samaria at Jacob's well. And you may know it. It was a hot, dusty day and Jesus had been traveling a road that was unsafe for a Jew to travel. According to the story, the wayshower came upon Jacob's ancient well and stopped to rest. It was prohibited that he should speak to a strange woman in public, but he did. He asked her to draw water for him since he had no means of drawing it for himself. In return, he offered her the water of spiritual awareness, if she would but ask for it. I find it very interesting that all throughout the Bible we are told, you know, everything is ours. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, but we have to first ask for it. And you know, in this, this quest for spiritual awareness, it happens in many different ways. This year, at every service, we're going to be having a practitioner sitting in silence for the entire service in deep meditation and holding the light because I think we really are upping the, uh, what's it called? The up leveling the ante, okay, right, for our spiritual practice and our spiritual activity here at this temple. I'm feeling it very deeply. Um, I think it's, it's, it's 
really a vibrant movement of spirit through each and every person in the spiritual community. And this, this spiritual water from the well of self that I wanted to talk about this morning. So I take you to John chapter 4, verses 9 to 14. And just to, to recap the story for you very quickly. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, a woman of Samaria? And then the writer of the gospel puts a little, his own little opinion, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, friends, what is the meaning of this story? Who was this woman whom Jesus met at the well, and what does their meeting symbolize for us? in modern Jamaica in the 21st century, in a world where people from various wells and various faiths are at war with each other, failing to recognize that there is only one source to the well from which they draw. The woman in any biblical story is symbolic of the feminine within each of us, whether we be male or female. Whenever you read the Bible and there's a mention of a woman, it's about the feminine side of you. These stories tell us about meaningful interaction between the masculine aspect of ourselves and the feminine aspect of ourselves. And remember the Bible says, male and female created he them. And for many years, of course, religion has said, thought that that meant he created males separate from females. But really, you could read it another way. Male and female in one person created he them. So each of us have aspects of both the yin and the yang. The feminine aspect of being signifies metaphysically intuitive perception and natural love. Ladies, you feel good about being natural love. Isn't that, isn't that, what the, is the, that just the, the, the matrix? That, that links all of creation, isn't it? And you represent that. Wow, I stand in awe at that faculty that you bring to life. And so the story of the woman at the well is showing us that the intuition and natural love which is inherent in each of us draws life to the surface. In other words, these faculties bring forth life. Deep within each of us is that wellspring of life that can be drawn into consciousness to satisfy our thirst for well-being and the life more abundant. We should allow our intuition and natural love, our feminine aspect, to draw vital, vitality and strength from the well of life, which is the deep, mystical, and sacred place within each and every one of us. So can we say together, the well of life is within me? Can we say that? The well of life is within me. I draw from this well all that is necessary for life. I draw from this well all that is necessary for life. So you see, friends, there is that woman within each of us that stands beside the well of life the well of self, the well that is within you. The well of life is, is deep, for it is fed by the one source of all being, God. And our feminine side has the means to bring forth the water from it. And you know, water is the universal solvent, the solution of all life in potential. So just think about water as the universal solvent that contains all of the potentiality of life and that is drawn forth by the feminine in us into expression in the outer world. 
Like Jesus, we must approach the woman, the feminine within us, and ask for the water. And we do this by becoming more aware of and in touch with our intuitive knowing about life. And the word intuition for me has special meaning, for it means tuition on the inside. In tuition, inside tuition. In the past, the feminine was erroneously regarded as illogical, weak, and undependable, and sometimes in ancient days even dangerous. But we know today that learning to listen to our intuition can change our entire mode of living from a life that is lived in crisis mode to a life lived with direction and purpose. As I said on the first Sunday of January, if you want to get off the merry-go-round, you have to change the way you think. You have to change your consciousness. And one of the ways to do this is to come in touch with the feminine aspect of your being. So this morning, I want to share five steps for living from your feminine intuitive step, self. I'm going to give you the five steps and then I will, I will do a little explanation of each. But gentlemen, please make notes. The first step is found in Matthew 6, verse 6. And it is given by the master teacher himself. And it is this. Enter into thy closet. Enter into thy closet. Step one. Step two, pray honestly with your heart. Pray honestly with your heart. Step three, listen with detached expectation. Step four, let go and trust. And step five, follow your guidance. I'll give them to you again. One, enter the closet. Two, Honest prayer from the heart. Just put prayer dash heart. Three, listen with detached expectation. Four, let go and trust. And five, follow your guidance. Remember, your guidance, not your good Bessie Wessie, who you have phoned and told the whole story that you have regurgitated many times about how badly you have been done by. Not that guidance, the guidance of your intuition. So the first step, enter the closet, has a very interesting uh, parallel with, with architecture of Jewish homes in the time of Jesus. In the center of every home was a closet which had no windows and corresponded architecturally with the Holy of Holies or inner chamber of the temple in Jerusalem. This sacred room was used as a retreat for prayer and meditation. But it doesn't matter, my friends, where we pray in following Jesus' recommendation. And I personally couldn't lock myself in a room without windows because I'm claustrophobic. So I like to meditate in open spaces. I therefore find uh, the meditation garden. I was walking through there yesterday. Um, here at the temple, and I was reminded how quickly a natural setting triggers new perceptions within me. I always find that walking outdoors, deep breathing, yoga, and quiet music help, me to, put, help to put me in touch with the woman, the intuition that is available from my life's well. But that's my way of doing it. We all have our way of getting in touch. You may, you may do it through quiet contemplation. You may contemplation. You may read. You may find it at the beach, uh, the sound of waves lapping. Um, God is accessible anywhere, isn't it? And therefore, find your own way of, of just getting in touch, going into that closet, into the secret place within you that is untouched by the chaos of the outer world. So that's entering the closet. The second step, heartfelt prayer, is simple and natural. As science of mind students, we know that we need never beg or beseech or cajole God for our good. Instead, we claim what we are ready and willing to receive. Jesus, in the great prototype prayer, taught us how 
His words were, give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say, oh, please, great Lord in the sky, I beg and beseech thee that perhaps a mere crumb could fall from your table onto the table of a wretched soul like me. Nonsense. You are created in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, you are, in macrocosm, what God is in the macrocosm. So you claim your good, knowing that it is already there for you. And all you need to do is ask. And not ask in the sense of begging and beseeching, but ask in the sense of claiming. Declare then in prayer that abundant life, abundant prosperity, abundant love, abundant health, abundant good and well-being are yours. And if you don't know how to do a spiritual mind treatment, then call the office and make an appointment with one of our practitioners or a minister to have some prayer work done. And better still, come to a class and learn this very important methodology of prayer. So step one, go into the closet, meaning go become still and become private. Step two, pray from your heart, affirmatively, claiming what you want. Step three, the third step for getting in touch with your intuition is simple and yet often overlooked. It is this. After praying, especially when asking for guidance, we should sit in silence for a few moments and listen. You may not hear anything, or you may get a hunch, but it's not necessary. The purpose of this silence is to become receptive to the intuitive guidance that you are receiving on the deepest level of your being. You, sometimes you'll get the answer and you won't even be aware of this guidance, for it will filter into your awareness in the coming days. Intuition, my friends, often reveals itself as knowledge that is so subtle you won't be able to determine when it came or from where it came. You will just know and know that you know. Step four is getting in touch with that intuition, and this is often the hard one for many of us. It is to let go and trust, or as someone put it, let go and let God. One way to let go and let God is to give thanks ahead of time for what we want, the perfect outcome of the situation that we're praying of. And this brings me to your assignment. Regulars at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica, know that I always give an assignment. Your assignment is, is a creative one this week, uh, should you decide to undertake it. Make yourself a God can. You agree that God can? Well, get yourself a tin with a lid, like a biscuit tin, and label it God can. Then write your prayer on a slip of paper and put it in your God can. Just your claim. I claim perfect health now. I claim the out perfect outcome of this situation now. Write your prayer, your claim, and put it in your God can. <laughs> and this is it now. After praying, you will find that the action of putting the prayer in your God can helps you to feel that you have truly let it go to God. But listen to me. If you find that you are beginning to worry about it or that you are trying to fix it by human means, take back out the slip of paper from the tin and carry it around until you are, are at once again willing to let go and let God. Because believe me, God can. Can we say it together? God can. My God can is an old Ovaltine tin. The other part of your assignment is to simply give yourself some quiet time this week, communing with the woman at your well. Come and sit in our meditation garden or join us for prayer power from 6 to 7 on Thursday evening. Just spend time with the woman, the intuition a natural love that is at the center of your being. It is perhaps the most important thing you can do for yourself to honor the feminine aspect of your nature. The fifth step is to act upon your guidance. This is where the masculine aspect of our natures works in union with the feminine, 
whose real function is to empower and illumine the intellect while the masculine galvanizes us into action. So there, men, we have use. The masculine side of us is the side that does. You know, it's very interesting when, when I notice interactions between men and women. Women sometimes just want to talk, you know, about the day. And men immediately begin to go into solution mode. Well, why don't you? And she will say, I never asked you for, to work it out for me. I just wanted to tell you what's operating in my life. So sometimes, <laughs> sounds familiar? We are naturally, the male, the male of the species, geared for action. And women are geared for contemplation and negotiation and compromise. What, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just combine those two, two aspects? They'd be working perfectly for us. So the woman at the well, her intuition told her Jesus was some kind of prophet when he looked into her life and told her what he could see. You see, the masculine and feminine within you only seem like strangers. When you become conscious of and begin to honor these two aspects of yourself, they can meet and ask life of each other, sharing the truth that each knows about the other. In our world today, we're beginning to wake up to who we are as men and women. Our masculine and feminine are not separated by male and female bodies. Our masculine and feminine exist as two vital aspects of our being that create our wholeness and indeed our holiness. We are both male and female. And so friends, if something doesn't seem to be going right in your life, you can better determine the problem if you understand these aspects of your being and how they can help you. Listen within for the promptings of your intuition. Watch yourself this week to see if your actions are based upon love, which is from the feminine aspect. Be mindful whether your intuition is saying one thing while your intellect is stubbornly going another way. Ask yourself whether the man and woman within you have met through your awareness of them and have spoken together at the well of life, which is the well of self. Let us affirm together, I drink deeply from the well of life. Together, I drink deeply from the well of life. It is the well of self. It is the well of self, fed by my never-failing source, God. Fed by my never-failing source, God. Let the woman at your well give you to drink. Trust your intuition and go after that dream that you have long held. And as you do, trust your masculine side to ensure that you take well thought out, logical steps toward the attainment of your desires. The masculine and feminine within you have no need to compete. They can work and will work together to create beautiful experiences in your life. So let's go back to Jacob's well once again. Jesus and the, woman, and the woman were in dangerous territory. Jesus because he was a Jew in Samaritan territory, and the woman because she was alone and unprotected. As each shared the waters of life, both natural and spiritual, there was no competition between them. There was no fear of loss. There was just the knowing that both of them were part of this incredible, amazing web of life. In today's world, we appear to be walking a rocky road in human culture. All over the world, we see evidence that we are crossing the ancient boundary lines of old prejudices. In our lifetime, we have seen an African-American become president of the USA, and we might yet see the first ever woman appointed to that high office. Now more than ever, we need to allow the masculine and feminine aspects of our nature to unite as we discover and celebrate our eternal oneness as sons and daughters of Almighty God. Dr. Ernest Holmes, who gave us this great teaching, writes in the Science of Mind textbook, and I quote, spirituality springs from within, coming from that never failing source of life which quenches every thirst whose source is eternity, the wellspring of self-existence, unquote. And so I know for each of you this morning that as you drink deeply from the well of self, radiant health, harmonious relationships, 
perpetual prosperity, true wisdom, and total well-being are the divine outpourings which fill your cups of acceptance to the brim and overflow into your world so that you will never thirst again. Namaste.